we were listening last verse about the uh, Guru Charane Rati, how the Rati is so the attachment, the eagerness, the greed, even the nasty desires for our mercy from Sri Guru's Charana, Lotus Feet, is so important that we may develop the same greed that we have for any worldly, sensual desire, that we have the same greed for this, to get the mercy of the lotus feet of the moons in the service. So Sri Sri Radha Mohan, from our beloved Kuri, and that he may guide us in this direction. And so today, it's also one of my very favorite uh, paragraphs coming up of Srila Narottam Dostaku, who is telling Chakchudana Dilulu. Damna, Damna, Prabhu say, he, my Gurudev, who opened my eyes. He is the birth of my. My, he is my Lord, birth after birth. Divya Gyan, Dede Lokashito, he revealed divine knowledge within my heart. And this actually is the subject of today's verse. How is this taking place? This Divya Gyan, this transcendental knowledge of the Divya, of the divine. How is it transferred? How is this process of transformation? And the purport of Srila Vishwana Chakravati part is so amazing, it's so deep, and it's so wonderfully explained by Srila Anantada Sabaji Maharaj. That we will go step by step. So here, uh, first they explain how the living entity is living in this material world, identifying as the body. This is all our process. We are in this process. We are in this material world, but we think we are this here, but somehow we know also we are not that, and we have heard that we are the soul, but how we come to these steps in a deeper level of realization up to the level that I am Vasu, up to the level that I am always a servant of Sri Radhi. Although the living entity who is Krishna's eternal servant consists of pure spirit. They have forgotten, forgotten their constitutional position and have been in the grip of the external illusory energy since beginning last time. Thus, we consider the gross material body to be myself, I, and all relationships, like husband and children, to be our mind. Thus, according to our cravings and conditionings, we wear different bodies and wander around in this material world suffering the intolerable pangs of birth, death, old age, and disease. Worshipping Sri Krishna under the shelter of the lotus seat of Sri Guru is the only means to become free from this misery. The living entity has forgotten that he is Krishna's eternal servant 
And due to this fault, Maya has bound him around the neck. If he worships Krishna and serves the Guru, the network of illusion will snap and he will attain Krishna's lotus feet. By giving initiation and instructions, Sri Gurudev will save the student from the ocean of birth and death. Opening his deluded physical eyes that are unable to perceive Godhead and making them qualified to perceive spiritual things. So I think this is already such a nice uh, description by initiation and instructions. Initiations are purifying processes. We are given a new spiritualized or energetically different name from what we have gotten from our parents. Now we accept Shiguru as our spiritual parent. And Guru also accepts us as spiritual children. By this, there is a new connection and this is the only connection that can bring the living entity who are completely lost in the cycles of repeating birth and death into another realm. Why? By this initiation and by the instructions of Shiguru, something is happening with our consciousness, our eyes, even our material eyes. They become purified, they become spiritual light. And that is a wonderful, wonderful process that is so amazing and so auspicious. It brings so much love and happiness and good, actually not only for myself, but for the whole family, for the whole village, for the whole country and for the whole unit. Why is this so? Because once a soul who has been traveling here for long enough, and we all, maybe also you know how that feels when one has been here over and over and over again. It's something like chewing a very old chewing gum. In the beginning, it tastes interesting, and after a while, it becomes a bother. So after chewing this process of trying to enjoy in different, different forms, in different, different incarnations, it will happen that at one point, we will feel that our chewing gum of chewing the chewed again and again has become very tasteless. And this is our beginning of a very nice process. Then we can accept Sri Guru. Then we are looking for someone who can help us. And then the initiation and the instructions. This in you know, working together will give us physical eyes that are looking in a spiritual way. And that is the process of Dibya Gyan, which is now slowly, slowly sinking into our hearts. First, maybe it is a matter of knowledge. We want to know so many things. We have uh, understood that my God, I am suffering here. I am repeating so many things. And they have become very boring. They have become even annoying. They have become very uh, tasteless. So Shiguru helps us to perceive the divine. Because this person, this soul, this 
Manjari, this Dasi, has already these spiritualized eyes and they can give us this Chakshuda and Diluyu. They give us the divine vision, the divine taste, and they are empowered to do it in such a way that we will not sometimes even notice how it is happening. And making the disciple qualified to perceive spiritual things. So actually, whenever something happens in my heart, in my consciousness, in my thinking, in my feeling, where I, I uh, feel this is now Shimati Radhika speaking to me, or she... Uh, Shiguru Dev and, and all I see the nature as their nature I see everything as theirs no? that is what we are doing we are also we are connecting the nature with them, we bring flowers to, to them, we are cooking for them, we are doing all of this first of all when we do it in the spirit of connecting connecting that what we call meta into the spiritualized process of offering or decorating, actually up to the level of when we are doing it also in a spiritual consciousness, that actually everything is spiritual and everything belongs to them. And we are just here to, to realize that and to reconnect. And when these things happen in my consciousness, and this happens every day in a minute, you know, I remember it, it's the mercy of Shikuru. Because Shikuru has opened my blind eyes. The power of their own love, the power of their own love, their feelings. And first of all, what they feel for us is uh, compassion. And this compassion comes directly from the heart of Srimati Radhika. Because she is Kripa Mai. She has so much feeling for all the living entities who are not in the service of Krishna in a direct way. When we are serving the Maya, we are serving in an indirect way. All of what we do is somehow or another if you look at it, we try to serve. Either we try to serve our own senses or we try to serve humanity. We try to serve our family. Until when a big cycle has been finished, we come to understand it's all the service of Shimati Radhika and Raviyami. And then if we are serving from this consciousness by the mercy of Sri Guru, our real eternal life will start to blossom. So they make us qualified. Sri Guru makes us qualified and blessing the disciple with the ambrosial relish of bhajan. It's not only that we are trying to connect. It's not only that we are like, oh, I have to offer it. Otherwise, it is sinful. In the Vaidhi Bhakti, we are always so much concerned not to do anything wrong. But Sri Guru is helping us to overcome all these fears. Sri Guru is very naturally connected to Radha Mohan. Shri Guru is breathing love in and breathing love out. So whenever we are close to Shri Guru in our minds and in our hearts, we also become fearless and we become full of love and we become qualified to see the love around us. To see Shri Mati Radhika's service to Shri Krishna. And we become inspired to also become again 
part of our natural constitutional position as their servant, as Srimati Radhika Sadhasi. And here it is so nicely explained. It's so, it's so, you know, it's so much relish. And I know also that the moment when I feel that something is relishable, I am so much in gratitude because she Guru has helped me to feel this relish. Because before I was not able to relish. Before maybe I was reading it and I think, okay, I know all of this already. I have heard this a million times. But now by the mercy of Shiguru, who has opened my blind eyes, we have to really come to that merciful feeling of this is the first time I am reading this. And this is some spark already of how oh, Shimati Radhika feels when she always sees Mohan for the first time. And how Raghunatha feels when he feels that whenever I have some feelings for Shimati, that is the first time I feel something. So I can also understand whenever there is some feelings. When I hear the words of my Guru in the any kind of way, inside or outside or through others, I will listen and I will feel this as I hear this for the first time. And I'm touched like I hear this for the first time and I'm falling in love again and again with the divine love that I really in my heart always have this feeling, yes. That is the right thing to do. I want to dedicate my life to the service, my every day, my 24-7, to the service of Shiguru and become more and more spiritualized. Along with the eyes, it is indicated that the other senses of the practitioner also become spiritualized and are made suitable for worshipping the Lord. So here again, it is said that it's not only the eyes who can see or feel the divine in all what is happening, surrendering as accepting as everything as mercy, feeling every day and every moment important to remember. Why am I here? Who am I? And what am I doing? What is my consciousness? And then later, how can I serve my Swami in every moment? Even externally, the circumstances of my life may be a little bit difficult, but still internally, I am sheltered by remembrance, by the grace of my Guru in connecting to my eternal services. And then the senses that have been uh, a source of uh, maybe, you know, trying to enjoy, they become real spiritualized senses at one point. We can see this in Shiguru, how he or she are using their senses in such an elegant way. It's like when you are there, you just want to observe them all the time, how they are taking the shot, how they are chanting, how they are speaking. Now, only to see this, you feel like you are showered in a rain of praying. Because once the senses are spiritualized by the mercy of Guru, they are emanating praying. And so Shiguru makes also their disciples suitable for worshipping the Lord. Means we can, by the mercy of Shiguru, develop our spiritual senses and grow into our eternal spiritual identity. 
And that is not only a theoretical thing, you will notice it in everyone's behavior, in everyone's speaking, in feeling, and expression of love through singing, through speaking, through sharing prasad. All these beautiful items that are enlivening our relationships with each other and our relationship with Jimati Radhika. And we become ready. We become spiritualized. We become prepared. Shiguru is preparing us. And always looking, oh, is my disciple ready? Or where are some things that have to be balanced and more improved? And the purpose of this is that the mundane senses and minds are unfit to worship Sri Krishna. Why? Because Sri Krishna is not attracted by any matter or any selfish, uh, materially contaminated activity. They are attracted by love only and by eternal service mood. And love is increasing now. And that can only happen in the spiritualized body the spiritual senses. But as the body becomes spiritualized here in this material world, also it will develop more and more qualities of spiritual uh, activities and behavior and thinking and feeling. When Sri Guru Dev gives initiation mantra, being subdued by feelings, of causeless compassion. The disciple exclaims, O oh, Shiguru, O oh, embodiment of the Lord's deep compassion, save me who am scorched by the fire of material existence and grabbed by the force of time. O oh, Lord, I am surrendered unto you. When the disciple exclaims this and surrenders, his body, mind, and life is to Shiguru Dev. Then Shiguru, who with his touch of the power of ambrosial principle of Godhead, is anointed with his own compassion and passes this down. And this compassion of Shiguru acts like a touch stone that turns iron into gold. So that is also very interesting. When the attitude, when my attitude as a disciple becomes very uh, opened and I am ready to receive, I open my heart and I open all my my life and my soul, everything what I is in my ability, if I give this to Shiguru, then Shiguru will give the touch of the power of the ambrosial principle of Godhead. Means actually in easy words, Shiguru will give the connection to Shimate Radhika. Who is full of nectar? It is Shimate Radhika because she can give nectar to even Sri Krishna. She is the source of nectar for the one who is the relisher of nectar. She is the Rasasa. So Sri Guru is connected to Sri Matiradika as the container and the essence of all nectar that comes from this realm of eternity and love. And Sri Guru will give us this connection. And with Guru's own compassion combined and opened with the compassion of Shrimati Radhika. They together will turn iron into gold. And 
I mean, this is such a beautiful, beautiful thing. And uh, just to meditate how this is happening in my life, I feel very touched and I feel very thankful. And I become very humble also at the same time. And then what happens? This is such an amazing description. So the power of Shiguru's own devotion, and of course connected to their guru's devotion, and their guru's devotion means the mantras are coming down, right? In the parampara, and the decept disciplic love flow. And they are filling this devotion, infusing it into the body, mind, and life cares of the disciple. So this is a very beautiful picture that is rising up right now. That like the dead body becomes spiritualized, life full, uh, shining, a beaming, uh, golden body of love. And that is actually my swadu, my eternal constitutional Dasi body. And like Rudy told a lot of times, it's also shining through our bodies that are we, we are here. It's shining through, it's not separate. Because we are always eternally servant of the divine. But we just had forgotten it and now we are connecting and then it becomes alive again. It's like gold. turning into gold. It was iron before, and this iron was not only iron, it was also rusty and covered with, you know, how iron can become old. In Vrindavan we see it. The iron taps and the iron um, tools, when they come in contact with water, and then very soon it will not work so nice, it becomes hard to open, no? the tap becomes hard to open. But when it turns into gold, when this iron is touched by the devotion and by the connection of Sri Guru Dev's connection to their Guru Dev and to their Guru Dev, up to Sri Mati Radhika and Mohan, Sri Ananga Manjari, then they will make us gold. And you know, gold is very precious. It's very precious. It's not only nice to look at, it is actually a very, very beautiful transformation that is happening from something old and rusty and temporary into some eternally shining personality that has some sparks of the qualities of service that Shimati Radhika wants to use. Shiguru Manjari wants to use in the service of Shimati Radhika. And thus, when this is, again, let's read this again, it's so nice. When the disciple exclaims their surrender of the mind, the heart, and the body, then the guru, with the touch of the power of the ambrosial principle of Godhead, anointed with his own compassion, which acts like a touch stone that turns iron into gold, along with the power of their own devotion, filled with their worship of the Lord, infuses devotion into the body, mind, and life cares of the disciple, thus making the disciple's body 
and senses qualified for the transcendental devotional servants of the lords or of Srimati Radhika's lotus feet. The body, mind and senses of the sadhaka have thus become spiritualized and merged into worship of the Lord. And only by Guru's grace it can be accomplished that this stays in every limb of the body. So here we can hear that uh, this infusion is not only something that is like with a miracle stick. Oh, now you are Darcy, and uh, it will now be so that you are very uh, enlightened. And uh, no, this infusion is something that we need to re, re revive. We need to be updated in modern terms. We always have to be updated in our devotional uh, infusions. <laughs> Sometimes when the batteries go low, we need to be filled up. We need to be refreshed. We need an update with Sri Guru. And uh, we are so lucky that Gurudev is, is there in Vrindavan with Radha Mohan, and we can just jump there and get uploaded and refreshed, and we feel again completely infused, and the iron mind will become spiritualized every day. In this way, Guru's grace will make the body and mind of the disciple suitable for the worship of the lotus feet. Offer them to the Lord's lotus feet and establish a specific relationship of the living entity with the Lord. So here we see that uh, In this, in this level where uh, Maharaji is speaking, it's still always talking about the Lord. So we see that this is about the living entity that has been uh, just introduced and is getting um, a chance to start with the service. And it's very much uh, still looking Godhead, the Divine Lord. And slowly, when this infusion is taking more and more uh, place, then uh, it becomes associated with the service of Srimati Radhika by the power and the grace of Shri Guru. Hence, Srila Thakur Mahashoy says, he opened my physical eyes and enabled me to perceive the principle of Godhead by opening them and turning them into devotional eyes anointed with the ointment of love. So Shiguru is giving us the ointment of love to see with love. And this seeing with the eyes of love, it's an ongoing process. It's never stopping. It's going on deeper, deeper levels. There are unlimited levels in perceiving this world and also Nitya Leela, finally Nitya Leela with the eyes of love. 
And the eyes and the heart have become more and more turned into this loving, eternal consciousness that we are and that we are connected with again and again. And that we are opening ourselves with again and again. Then we not only see here everything with love and we become more balanced beings, we become more stable and we can deal with difficult circumstances but now and now then we can also be of use in the realm of Shimate Radhika and we can help her we can help her with her difficult circumstances how to overcome the obstacles with the Jatila and Bhutila with the parents-in-law and the sister-in-law She has also many obstacles. And she goes uh, reminding us it's not only about your obstacles, it's about helping to come to such a level of pure love that we become qualified by the mercy of those who are already in her service to help there with her uh, obstacle that this meetings of Radha Mohan can take place and and we who have been helped so much we can now also help them and become their eternal dasis in the realm of eternal love. So Shiguru Dev When he is pleased and places the power of his grace in the heart, divine knowledge is revealed through his instructions and initiation into Krishna mantra. This Sri Guru, the bestower of love for Krishna and knowledge about him, is my Lord and Master birth after birth. And I am his servant, birth after birth. This statement shows the relationship between the Guru and the disciple and the eternity of that relationship also. In other words, a living entity wanders through different species of life according to their previous activities and has relationship with different fathers, mothers, friends, and relatives each time. But the relationship between the Guru and the disciple is not like that. Birth after birth, the disciple stays with the same Sri Guru according to the time, making him drink the sweet nectar of bhajan blessing him with prema and taking him to the kingdom of Leela and ultimately blessing him by giving him the service of his beloved deity. So here we hear about this wonderful, wonderful relationship with Sri Guru. First, Sri Guru gives us to drink. What Should we drink, like the mother's breast, we drink the milk of their rasakata, of their premikata, of their love, to Shimati Radhika, to Radha Mohan, to their Gurudev, to devotional service, to all the different, different aspects that are important for us, to hear who we are and what is our service and how to purify our hearts so that the golden infusions remain there that we will develop the golden heart also become soft and compassionate and also become sometimes hard as a thunderbolt if it's necessary and taking us to the kingdom of Leela means Sri Guru is also calling us come Do Leela Smaran, remember the past times. I am waiting there for you. I remember one class 
And Gurudev was so much in his emotions and he says, I'm waiting there. When are you coming? And then blessing us by giving the service of his beloved deity. Aho, Guru Kripa, nothing can equal this. After this, Srila Thakur Mahashai says, Prema Bhakti Jahaite Avidya Vinashayate Vete Kai Jahara Charite. We have said that when the compassion of the Lord, who is an ocean of mercy, becomes very dense, very thick, then it assumes tangible form and appears as the Guru to benefit the conditioned souls. Through that, Sri Guru Dev, who is the incarnation of the Lord's grace, we can come to know the Lord's compassion. Sri Guru Dev is an embodiment of the mercy of Sri Radhika and Mohan of Sri Gauranga. Sri Guru Dev's heart is the Druid throne where Queen Bhakti, who is the essence of the Lord's pleasure and existence potency, sits. Bhakti Devi is sitting in the heart of Sri Guru. And she is waiting to be distributed. Sitting there, she distributes her grace to the people of the world. Mounting Sri Guru's grace, she pervades the heart of the student and blesses them with the gift of prema. So when Shiguru mounting Shiguru's grace means Bhakti Devi, she is sitting in the heart of Shiguru. She is waiting when the heart of Shiguru becomes melted. Because Shiguru is also, you know, and when does the heart of Shiguru become melted? When the disciple is taking all obstacles in their lives and is still not deviating and is always remembering and always endeavoring to be with Shiguru inside and outside. When then that, when Guru. Dave sees that the disciple is so eager and so sincere and so humble and is not wanting any praise or any recognition and is doing many, many services, not showing off the services, but just quietly and lovingly trying to serve. Then Sri Guru's heart is melting. And when Bhakti Devi sees it, when Sri Mati Radhika is seeing this, she will be mounting on the heart and going out through the eyes, through the mouth, to all the pores of the Guru Dev. The mercy will flow towards such a disciple. and blesses us with the gift of prema. That is this uh, prema bhakti jaha hoiti avidya vinashayati. And Gurudev is often explaining in this regard that maybe before in our practice, in our practices of sadhana, we think, ah, oh, I have to purify myself. I have to do anatta nivriti, anatta nivriti, and only then I am qualified when all my vices, my not so good qualities are gone and I'm washed white, like this chada, I try to put white so I'll be washed white. 
<laughs> but it doesn't work like this. We need the mercy of Prem. We need the mercy of Bhakti Devi, of Shimati Radhika. It comes, she comes through the mercy of Gurudev. They are like in the direct local call. The pipeline is always very open and flowing. And then and when this happens, then all the Abhidya is destroyed in Prema Bhakti prevails. That is the that is how it works. <laughs> because by myself it's very difficult to overcome all my bad habits. Uh, my uh, over 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 endeavors to, to satisfy my senses and to be whoever I try to be in this world. We all have different, different uh, impressions in our hearts from many lifetimes. But when the mercy of Shiguru comes, so then Bhakti Devi is so merciful that she takes away the avidya, this ignorance. Only like this is the only way how it can happen. And then what happens after that? After that, when knowledge about the relationship, our eternal relationship to Radha Mohan is attained by Shiguru's grace, all possessiveness towards bodily things and matters that are not related to the Radha and Mohan is lost. And through the Sri Guru Pranali Parampara, a deep possessiveness towards Sri Krishna descends to the heart of the practitioner. So here again, it is uh, proved by Srila Naratam Nastako. Prema Bhakti Jahaiti Aved Yavina And then Divya Gyan Ridi Prakashitu. Like this, when the mercy comes flowing through the heart of Srimati Radhika, through Bhakti Devi, through Guru Devi, and uh, we are perceptive, our containers of our hearts are open, then this will destroy the ignorance. And when ignorance is destroyed, then all the external things become secondary. It's not that we forget everything. We, we are living also in this material world. We have some duties. We have some uh, responsibilities. But we are doing them in the renewed consciousness of being the Dasi. We are not identifying in this as a, our major, major subject. The major subject now is our relationship to Shiguru Shimati Radhika service and my Swarup, how to develop. First, I develop uh, Guru Nishta. And then Ishta Nishta, Shiguru will guide me to the service of Srimati Radhika and Mohan. And then my Swarup Nishta will develop. Oh yes, I am this eternal entity and I have such a such quality. I have such a such a dress and I have such a such a service. And the Ekadas of the 11 qualities will be revealed to the disciple by the mercy of Shiguru, when the time has come. And this is actually this deep possessiveness. That is the rati that we were singing in the verse before. This um, feelings, when the feelings develop. It's not such a big secret. And you know, often we 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 try to develop feelings, but when they are not there, it's not that they can be pressed. Feelings develop over time and with uh, uh, becoming acquainted, we need to be in relationship and open our hearts and, uh, and let it happen that we become more and more attached to the Lotus Feet of Shikuru and to the service of Shikuru and all our brothers and sisters on the way, and our Radha Mohan. It will, it's all like a big eternal. 
and we are being tuned by initiation and instructions. We had this also in our Sunday Zoom that uh, the heart is being strung like an instrument. It needs to be in, the, in a good tuning so all the hearts together can make a big concert for the divine service in our divine bodies and in our spiritualized consciousness. Then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will be very happy and uh, we will be very uh, able to, to receive all the gifts, all the mercy that are there waiting for us to, to be received. Is there any um, anybody out there who wants to share some feelings to that? And I would like to listen from you also. Please uh, help me also a little bit. Hey, Rade, Udava, I see you. It's so lovely, Sharon. Thank you very much. I think from all of us here in uh, Munger Mandir, we're um, eight in the room, including Gurudev. And um, you're inspiring um, a nice exchange between us about knowledge and love and the relationship between them, whether they're compatible with each other and what relationship they have to each other. That is knowledge, jnanam, and bhav. And I wonder if you could comment on it and, and give us some guidance in our discussion here. <laughs> oh, you are so humble, would you be? Uh, when I listen to your classes, then I am always um, very much astonished and impressed how you are combining this knowledge of Bhagavad Gita into the feelings of Shimati Radhika's love that is uh, uh, hidingly going to all, all, all of the chapters. I think when, the, when our spiritual senses have been awakened, then the Gyan that was maybe before uh, something that was like a, a, how do you say, like a, you know, it was helping to stand up. <laughs> a crutch. Yeah. Yes. yeah, it's a crutch. The gyan is a crutch that uh, we need as, as, as uh, long as there's not so much emotions, is there, if, if there's not so much uh, rati attachment and uh, realizations but as, as when the, the body becomes spiritualized and the heart becomes purified I feel uh, then um, the crutch is not needed anymore because then the flow of love the bath is so strong that gyan is, is something that uh, will, will serve the love and it's not the other way around. Before, when I was in Vaidhi Bhakti uh, Sadhana, I feel that I need Vyan to, to evolve. And, uh, but when the heart becomes mercifully infused, as we have heard from Shila Noratom Dastako, infused by the golden love of Shimati Radhika, which is passing down through Shiguru, then uh, the crutches are not needed anymore because I feel more 
guided in the emotions and in the feelings, and, and that includes the gyan. The gyan becomes also spiritualized and becomes va. That is how I feel it, but maybe it's my speculation. I think Gurudev maybe knows much more about it. <laughs> Gurudev was smiling lovingly at us when we were having the discussion. So. <laughs> Is, is there not also a saying, I remember that when Bhakti Devi comes into Vrindavan, Jan and Vairagya become old. <laughs> well, I think you placed yourself um, diplomatically in the middle of the debate between the two. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Can I share something? Of course. What? Radhe Radhe. Jai Radhe Gaura Sundari. I also like to <laughs> add something, a small thing. The conclusion of Jyan, if it is feelings, it comes to feelings, then Kyan is successful. But the conclusion of feelings, is not Gyan. The conclusion of feelings is more feelings. So, thank you. Thank you. Yes, good day. Oh, who is this? Radesh Mavi. Dati Dati. Dati Dati. Now, what question came to my mind by this discussion? Um, so, also what Gorasunda said, now is it also that maybe bath can come and then this knowledge is serving, like then after the knowledge is coming and serving the bath to get more bath? Mm -hmm. I personally agree with that uh, that knowledge can can result in greater, stronger, deeper path. That there's not a wall between the two, but that but that not knowledge can actually give us a higher form of path. Yeah, this is the truth of knowledge. What I see. That is knowledge. How long I can see, how details I can see, is that real knowledge. Right? Outside seeing is one thing, and out and in is seeing is one thing. And deep think seeing is also knowledge. But this knowledge without how is not coming to see. And this bhav is the feeling what how long we want to go. We want to stay with the senses, body, mind, ego, or we want to go beyond that. Which type of knowledge we want to gather? <laughs> And Narutam Das Mahasaya is telling, Guru is satisfied when you go to the beyond the knowledge of material thing, then he said, you follow the lineage, parampara, mm. of love and divinity. Then he is happy. Why is happy? Because not to stay in material knowledge is a limited. You come and join a spiritual life, see it in a spiritual way, divine. This is not complete knowledge. 
right? Mm -hmm. And when it's clear, <coughs> we can see both at the same time. Mm -hmm. And then we have interest what we like it. Huh? Yeah, come on, see. <laughs> I don't know. Anything. My good name also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ah, thank you. Uh, the, I don't know anything. Morning. I just, I just felt, but I, I feel it's like the, the most important knowledge. You no, know, it's about our form. You no, know, so that we can develop, so we can stay there in this feeling. I feel like that. That I feel is for me. I don't know. Most important, just to. Try to stay there. Anything else? Everything else? Knowledge is not so necessary. It's like it's most important that we can be there and feel feel the feelings in this spiritual world. This is so I, mm. I feel. Uh -huh. That is the order that Prem Bhakti, Jahavati, all material gathering. It will be not very interested to me. How will they have an answer? But we are trying to come out from that. No need to afford that. Why to afford to, to control your senses, body and ego? It will never control. You can stop your pee pee and kaka. <laughs> so why you want to do hot yoga to control your kaka? <laughs> why not try over than that? <laughs> that is prema. Prema is not possible to do in material work. It's only possible to de do with divine divinities. Mm -hmm. be wonderful plan. I'm surprised what you are <laughs> teaching us. <laughs> I'm just repeating. They all know more than me. You know that, and they are with you. I just try to run behind all of them and be with you. For reviving the words of Narottam Das that where is my mistake I can improve that. This is our good luck. And I listen. Your class is sure. Uddhav class show and Gaurvani class. <laughs> this time Gaurvani and Uddhav melt my heart. Wow, I can see you crying, Nuri. Really? So this was my desire. My all brother, sister, and sister. And albums. Yeah. We are all no senior and junior. We are only one day senior <laughs> and junior. So that, By your trust, um, Gurudev, you give us this chance to do this together with you. You are very, very generous, I must say. <laughs> We have to be always practice this to be in where my mistake to improve it. This has to be careful. Sadhu Sadhan. Oh, saintly body, mind, you be careful that not mistake happen in your life. That has to be. Why not they say demon Sadhan? Sadhu Sadhu. Prem Prajan always says, Sadhu Sadhu. I like this. Why? 
only sensory mind has to be given. Yeah. Thank you. So, now is a very nice Kirtan program organized by in 10 minutes, 5 30. Yes, by, by Sri Dati Gurudev. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow will be Guru Purnima. Jai Ho, what a nice day. Everyone is welcome. Gopina said to share his Guru Sadha and and Guru offering with his love and his flower offering with the words to Nityananda. The Shraddha Pushpanjali, it's called Shraddha Pushpanjali. Jai Nitai Nitai Andare Nitai Bahare Nitai. This very beautiful Nitai Guru is inside and always outside. Jai Good if did you have the cherries and the corn? Wow. I, I love that. And I control only for myself. <laughs> that I really <laughs> have so many. <laughs> no, nobody brings cherries and corn. Only Suniti. <laughs> when I see cherries, corn, bees. And the bagels. The bagels. The bagels are so hot. And also, no, you are sharing time. it with all Gurudev. I know you are always sharing. <laughs> you also come from Estonia. He also bring. So, Who? So, Kishore. 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 Oh, nice, nice. Oh, yeah. So nice to see all of you. Join international program and share your love for the Sri Sri Radha Govinda's Pavaji. We have a nice puja for Radha Govinda's Pavaji in morning time. Mm -hmm. We have a kirtan for his map. For remembering him because he is always present in our heart. And all the work is happening is what we see of him. Yes. People ask him, every ashram is Guru Puja is happening. I said, we also do Guru Puja. In this ashram, Sri Sri Radha Govinda Baba is Guru. And he is living. And he is Puja Vidu. He is living. He is doing everything to develop divine life. And that uh, we no need to forget and make new new system. This is my desire, and I want you all follow like this. This is Nitai. That is Nitai. He is. He. He was, he is, he will be. All this. And Nithai is a way. Jesus was the way. 
not do. He never said that I am a goal. Why you make the goal? To the way that takes time to change that. When you make the way goal, then there is no goal. And to change this idea is a very difficult matter. It is so difficult that you lose the goal. And this is my bath philosophy. That guru is my goal. So me in any book of Gauri Avaishna, that guru is the goal. Of six Goswami and anyone, when it's not good, why you create? Even Jesus not said to you, why you create yourself to do the goal to make easy or difficult? We make our is difficult life when we make the guru is the goal. Sorry to say, my dear, be careful, be careful, be careful. The blockage only comes when we lose the goal of life. Then we block ourselves in nowhere. We block ourselves in some root broken and we block ourselves. Some diversion come in the road, we block ourselves. Bridge broken, we block ourselves, we cannot go. Understand what I want to say? Is the way you, you have to walk. You think that he will walk for you? Not possible. You have to walk then you will get the result. That's it. Living in this consciousness, you are walking is that. If you live in that consciousness 24-7, then it's not possible, but you think to walk on that. But, uh, Yes, now time is over. But in short, I want to share you. Thank you, Guruji. So nice. <laughs> you will say what you are telling. You are doing your position down. I said, no. If we become Dasi of Pradhika, we need that position. We need to become Daksi of Pradhika. We need to be a Daksi of our life. We are not interested to any position to show us. And that way we got the false ego. Why we need position? To become good. We have to become Daksi. Smallest. Beauty to become smallest, not to become big. When I will learn from my disciple that day, I will understand because I can see my spiritual master everywhere. Understand? I can see <laughs> my good day if any suniti in punyam in our uh, all of you is it the word of Prabhupada. Listen his words. And what Prabhupada is telling in Bhagavad Gita, listen, Uddhava. Then he will say, now I understand the Prabhupada.
what is happening to the Prabhupada himself talking from his mouth. You can feel it. Thank you. Radha, Radha. Wonderful, Gurudev. Your happiness is our happiness. Your happiness is my happiness because some need will be happy. That's the goal. Radha, Radha. 